Welcome! In this tutorial, we'll discover cross entropy, a single concept that underlies everything from basic classifiers to state of the art generative adversarial networks. By learning how cross entropy measures surprise and how it drives model training, you'll gain the tools to evaluate, debug, and innovate in any deep learning project. Imagine a six sided die. If I tell you it landed on four, you needed only about two or three yes no questions to be certain. But a hundred sided die landing on 73, that demands many more questions. Those extra questions are bits of information. The more surprising an event, the more bits it carries. We capture that idea in one formula, h of x equals negative log base 2 of p of x. A rare event with p equals 0.1 yields about 3.3 bits of information, whereas a common event p equals 0.9 is only 0.15 bits. The negative log flips the scale, so low probability equals high bit cost. Up to now, we've seen how much surprise each outcome carries in isolation. Entropy generalizes that to the whole distribution. It asks on average, how many bits of surprise will you encounter if you draw a random sample? Concretely, we compute h of x, which does two things at once. First, for each possible outcome x over i, it multiplies its probability pxi by its information content log base to pxi. That gives more weight to rare, but highly surprising events and less weight to common, low surprise events. Second, summing over all outcomes then tells us the expected number of bits we'd need to describe any one draw. Look at our two examples. On the left is a skewed distribution, 0.9, 0.05, 0.0. .05, 90% of the time you see the same outcome, so there's very little uncertainty overall, about 0.17 bits on average. On the right is a uniform distribution, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33. Each outcome is equally surprising, so the average surprise rises to about 0.48 bits. In other words, a uniform distribution demands more bits per sample because it's intrinsically more unpredictable. In practice, entropy sets a fundamental lower bound on how well any compression or prediction scheme can perform. You cannot, on average, encode samples in fewer than h of x bits without losing information. At its core, entropy quantifies how much uncertainty or randomness lives inside your data. In machine learning, we can think of entropy as the minimum average number of bits needed to encode or describe each sample without loss. That means if your dataset has high entropy, lots of variability, and rare events, no matter how clever your model is, it still needs a richer representation to capture all those nuances. Conversely, low entropy data is inherently simpler. Imagine a constant signal or one very predictable class, so you can compress or predict it with very few bits. This lower bound set by entropy has two practical consequences. One, compression and storage. Lossless compressors, like ZIP, can never on average beat the entropy limit. If you try to encode data into fewer bits per sample than its entropy, you'll inevitably lose information. 2. Predictive Modeling In classification or regression, entropy tells you how hard the problem can be at best. A data set with low entropy can be fit by even a simple linear model, while high entropy data often calls for deep architectures or more expressive features, because there's simply more surprise to explain. When you're designing or selecting a model, always ask, what's the entropy of my target distribution? That number sets a theoretical floor on your achievable loss, and reminds you why some tasks, like natural language or image generation, are intrinsically more challenging than others. Now that we've seen entropy measure the average surprise of a single distribution, let's bring in a second distribution and ask, what happens when we use the wrong probabilities to encode our data? That's what cross entropy captures. In formula, we have P is the target distribution, the true probabilities we wish our model to match. Think of it as the ground truth frequencies of different outcomes in the real data. For example, how often each class appears or how often each pixel value occurs. Q is our model distribution, the probabilities our network currently predicts. Early in training, Q may be far from P, but as learning proceeds, we hope to close the gap. 
The cross entropy sum does two things. It weights each event by its true importance, PXI, then it charges us negative log base 2 QXI bits for encoding that event under our model's guess. Whenever QXI underestimates the true PXI, the term negative log base 2 QXI spikes, penalizing the model heavily. Conversely, if Q overestimates a rare event, we also pay extra bits. In practical terms, minimizing cross entropy during training forces Q to place its probability mass exactly where P does. You earn the fewest extra bits only when your model's beliefs align perfectly with reality. That is why cross entropy loss is the gold standard for training classifiers, language models, and even the adversarial networks we'll cover next. First, let's examine the discriminator. Its job is to distinguish real data from fake data produced by the generator. We assign the label 1 to real samples and 0 to generated samples. The discriminator's loss combines two parts. The first part measures how well it assigns high scores to real examples. It is the average negative logarithm of the discriminator's output on real data. The second part measures how well it assigns low scores to fakes. It is the average negative logarithm of 1 minus the discriminator's output on generated samples. Adding these two parts gives the total discriminator loss, which the network minimizes to become better at assigning high probabilities to real inputs and low probabilities to fakes. Next, the generator's goal is reversed. It wants the discriminator to believe its outputs are real. We therefore label each generated sample as 1 when computing the generator's loss. Concretely, this loss is the average negative logarithm of the discriminator's output on generated data. By minimizing this loss, the generator learns to produce samples that push the discriminator's probability closer to 1. Finally, training proceeds in an alternating three-step loop each iteration. Step 1 is the discriminator real step. Draw a batch of real examples, feed them to the discriminator, and update the discriminator to maximize the log probability it assigns to real data. Step 2 is the discriminator fake step. Draw a batch of latent vectors, generate fake images, feed them to the discriminator, and update the discriminator to minimize the log probability it assigns to fake data. Step 3 is the generator step. Draw another batch of latent vectors, generate images, and update the generator to minimize the negative log probability that the discriminator assigns to those images, which is equivalent to maximizing that same log probability. Alternating these updates sets up a dynamic minimax game. The discriminator continuously sharpens its ability to spot fakes, while the generator learns to fool it ever more effectively. It is this elegant tug of war, powered by binary cross entropy, that drives GANs to produce increasingly realistic data with each epoch.